Welcome back to Pop Em, Don't Watch Em Whiskey YouTube Show. Troy back with another one. Big show here tonight. A release that everybody chases every year. And in my opinion, I know I give Buffalo Trace a lot of shit, but this is one of their best products and overall best line. Tonight, we have the E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof 2021 release. Get into it. See what I think about it. See if I think it's worth the chase. And we're also going to compare it to last year's. So last year's E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof came in at 130.3 proof. It won my number three overall bourbon of the year in the blind bracket challenge. Can't wait to do that for 2021 with the 2020 blind bracket challenge. Number three bourbon of the year was the E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof. How will this year's compare to it? We're going to find out tonight. First, guys, please like the videos. Subscribe to the channel. We're always doing fun things here. And more importantly, over on Patreon, guys, the Pop and Don't Watch them page, it is on fire, doing great giveaways. This month's giveaway... This will be in the sample pack for the August giveaway. Go over there, become a patron. Guys, I always love the support, love chatting with you guys, man. I love getting the feedback. I love getting messages, helping you out on your purchases. That's what it's all about. Love giving back. That's over on Patreon. But let's get down to business. The E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof 2021 this year's comes in at 127.3. Mash Bill, Buffalo Traces, Mash Bill number one, that's their low ride. Um, they don't disclose it, but you know, everybody pretty much knows that. Same Mash Bill as Stag Jr. and George T. Stag, which is probably why I like E.H. Taylor so much. Stag Jr. is my number one favorite Buffalo Trace product there is, not counting BTAC. We, we that's we don't count BTAC when we talk about just regular Buffalo, Buffalo Trace products. E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof's got to be a close number two, but Stag Jr., that's for the bang for the buck if you can get it for, you know, the $50 to $60 price range. That's their number one product, in my opinion. So, a little history. Colonel Edmund Hayes Taylor Jr. Who is he? How did he get into this? Well, he started out as... A banker. He financed a lot of the big distilleries in the late 1800s. Got to know a lot of the big famous whiskey makers. So he said, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. 1869, he purchased the distillery, OFC. Created that himself, which is now uh, the Castle and Key Distillery. I don't know a lot of people know that. Now they've redone that. And that is the, walk, that is the halls that Colonel E.H. Taylor was walking. So... He was famous for moder modernizing whiskey making with copper fermentation tanks. He did column stills. He even made a steam heating system that is still used in the aging warehouses today, in the barrel warehouses. So he did a lot of things for, uh, for the bourbon community, bourbon whiskey in general. But most importantly, the thing he is known for that changed the game of bourbon and whiskey in America forever. He was a huge proponent for higher standards in distilling because at that time, man, they were making whiskey and bourbon. They were putting tobacco, spit, iodine, battery acid to just make the whiskey look older because at that time, if it was older, it was darker. To them, that meant it was older. That meant it was higher quality, which was a total opposite. It was poisoning people. It was killing people. So E.H. Taylor, he took pride in his whiskey, so he thought they needed laws, something that the government could oversee. What did he come up with? 1897, he came up with the Bottled and Bond Act, one of the most famous food and food, federal oversight of food or liquid or whiskey, anything you want to call it, in the history of America, the Bottled and Bond Act. What that entails, the whiskey has to be from one distilling season, January to June, July to December. It has to be distilled in one of those seasons. 
one distiller at one distillery. One distiller at one distillery. So you can't have a blend from a Kentucky whiskey and then an MGP. It's got to be from one distillery and one distiller. Age for at least four years, and it's bottled at 100 proof. It doesn't have to be bourbon. It can be any type of whiskey as long as it follows those outlines. It can be called bottled and bond. It's a bonded warehouse. A key at the time was a major selling point was the distilleries did not have to pay the taxes on the whiskey until it was done aging. So instead of having to pay all that up front on the barrels that they had just distilled, they did not have to pay that tax until the back end, until it was done you know, it was done aging, so that way they could sell the product and get that money back faster than having to pay all those taxes up front. And then four years later, having to wait four years to finally get that money, that was one of the key selling points to the distilleries. And now today, Bottled and Bond, one of the most, you know, famous. Some people only drink Bottled. They love Bottled and Bond because it has 100 proof, which is a great proof. And they know the quality is always going to be there on a Bottled and Bond whiskey. So there's a little history of E.H. Taylor, Colonel Edmund Hayes Taylor Jr. So let's get into the 2021 edition. As I said, 127.3 proof. From what we know, we think it's between seven, nine years. We don't know for sure, but that is a consensus of the age between seven and nine years. So let's get into the whiskey. Oh man, so that is, that is textbook Buffalo Trace. It's a candy and bakery shop in this glass. Heavy, heavy vanilla, confectioner sugar. Oh man, a, a baked dough. A lot of oak on this one. There is, there's a, there is a lot of lot of oak on this one, which is, man, this is a hell of a nose. But oh my God, that crusty baked dough. Man, we had an old, um, a famous bakery here in New Orleans. It was called uh, Hugh Biggs Pies. And they made, I mean, probably, who knows, early 1900s, they were making pies. It actually set on fire. But they used to have these pies, and you'd get them in the stores. And, man, that, that's what this dough is reminding me of, this, this nose. That dough and the, the apple filling, the strawberry filling. I mean, it's almost like a fresh apple pie, that dough note. With that confectioner sugar. You know, not just regular sugar. This is like that powdered confectioner sugar. I love that stuff. Man, what a nose. With that oak, though, that oak is really balancing it out. Man. Strawberry. Tons of cinnamon. To Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr., cheers. Man, that is just an explosion of flavors. Now, this is the first pour of the day, so at 127, it's hitting. But, I mean, tons, tons of flavor. Very, very sweet. Um, the mouth is going numb. Mouthfeel is incredible. But what I'm finding surprising on this one is that spice on the back end. You know, this is a low rye, so it's more of an oak tannin spice, some cinnamon, Man, that dough note. All right, that was the first sip. So tons, tons of sweetness. The spice on the back end. Now the palate's acclimated. Let's get back into it. Okay. So the nose carries straight to the palate. The strawberry, the apple, the cinnamon. And now the spice has actually come down a little bit on that second sip. But I'm really liking how the oak on this batch, man, it balances out that sweetness. 
The finish is not as long as you would expect from something, you know, as high proof as this is, a barrel proof. The finish is a little, little short. But guys, the flavors. Strawberry jam. Apple pie. Man, I even get like almost like a, the, the, the strawberry on a, like almost like an almost burnt toast. Because I'm getting a little bit of, a little bit of smokiness on this that I usually don't get on E.H. Taylor. Almost like a char. Like that barrel, that barrel influence is really, really deep in this batch. So yeah, that that is, man, straight fruit, dough, cinnamon, barrel tannin spice, a little bit of smoke and char in there. This was a really balanced, balanced batch. Let's compare it to last year's. This was 130.3 proof. My number three of the year, the blind bracket challenge came out as number three. Wow. So the difference, man. So I didn't think there'd be a big difference, but there is. So when you put them together, you really smell that barrel influence and that char on this year's batch. This is just nothing but sweetness. I mean, pure candy, bacon, um, pastries. Oh, that is incredible. This is way more pungent as well. I mean, the, flavor, the, the nose is just popping on this one. Let me get a sip of this. So the apple, man, I did not think they were going to be that different, but they are. So this one's darker, more of that apple note than I do get a lot of the berry note. While this one, I get a lot of strawberry on top of that apple. Man. If I had to choose. Oh man, that's tough. That's tough. Last year's nose is, I think, overall profile in last year's. A little bit better than this year's. It's not far off. This one's just a little darker. Darker. Darker caramel. Dark. This is more like a caramel covered um, apple. A little bit of that bread note as I did in this one, but not as much. I mean, this is just, God, I mean, <laughs> it's insane how much this smells like a, um, a pastry, uh, you know, an apple pie pastry with a strawberry drizzle and a vanilla drizzle. This one, you get more of that brulee caramel. You don't get that oak char like you do on this one. You did not get that on last year's. But, man, I cannot wait to see how this does in this year's, man. That's a hell of a bourbon. So, I know Buffalo Trace, you know, they, everybody chases it. But this is one that's, you know, this is this is one of their products that are legit. I will, I will say E.H. Taylor, the whole line of E.H. Taylor is well done. This year's, I'm like, man, I'll give that an 8 out of 10. That, that's pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. If you like sweet, sweet bourbon, a little bit of char on the end to balance it out. This is your jam, but let's be honest, Buffalo Trace products, nobody care what they taste like. They just want to put them on their shelf. So, in closing, 2021 E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, definitely a buy if you can get your hands on it. Um, as far as secondary, man, I don't even know what they're going for anymore. I, I don't really follow secondary like I used to, so I don't even know what they're going for. If I had to ballpark what I think, you should pay for it. I mean, I'm not even retail doesn't matter. If you can get it for $250, I'm okay with that in today's bourbon world. You know, I, I think it's, you know, at $250, you know, some of the stuff, I, Blue Run's $250, and that's Barton garbage. So I, I think this would kick Blue Run's ass at $250. So if you can get it for $250, guys, pull the trigger. That's all I got to say on this one. If it's a Buffalo Trace product, if it's bottled and bond, if it's barrel proof, pop! Don't watch.